This is a storm update on Hurricane Milton. Breaking news for those joining us on CBS 47. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis giving an update live from Tallahassee on Hurricane Milton. He is at the state's emergency operations center as evacuations from the southwest coast continue all morning long. We're going to take a listen in where the projected landfall is. I think the 5 a.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center had it somewhere in the Bradenton Beach area in Manatee County. Uh, you could have a wobble either way. And I think one of the things that's been good is a lot of those folks down in southwest Florida, uh, like in Lee County and, and, and Charlotte, they're used to seeing the wobble end up going south. And so you've had a lot of people that have evacuated from some of those barrier islands. So just know it's possible that it could hit north of Tampa Bay, it could hit Tampa Bay, it could hit south south of Tampa Bay somewhere in southwest Florida, but wherever it makes landfall, there's going to be impacts far beyond uh, what the cone actually shows. Now, we have made, as I mentioned yesterday, pre-landfall declaration requests from FEMA. Federal government has approved a portion of our request. There are going to be um, landfall requests for major disaster declaration and individual assistance, and we anticipate those being approved as well. We have 51 counties currently under a state of emergency. As of the 5 a.m. advisory, Hurricane Milton is still a major hurricane. Uh, it is no longer a Category 5, but it potentially could strengthen back to that as it makes its approach to the state of Florida. Maximum sustained winds are in excess of 150 miles an hour. Now, their forecasts do call for it to weaken before it gets to landfall, and, and, and maybe that's true. Let's hope it's true. Maybe it's not, but even if it does weaken, you're still looking at, at a major hurricane. It is going to have really, really significant impacts. Right now, it's located about 560 miles southwest of Tampa, Storm surge warning has been issued for the Florida Gulf Coast from mainland Monroe County northward to the Dixie-Levy County line with storm surge watches in effect for Nassau County to Brevard Indian River County line, including the St. Johns River. 10 to 15 feet uh, peak storm surge is forecast for the Pasco-Pinellas County line uh, all the way down uh, into the area where you have uh, Manatee and, and Sarasota. Five to ten peak storm surges forecast from Yankee Town southward uh, and then from Englewood southward to Bonita Beach, including Charlotte Harbor. So that almost entire west coast of the Florida Peninsula has the potential to have really, really significant storm surge. And when you're talking about 10 to 15 feet, that's obviously major, but we saw what even four feet did with Hurricane Helene in, in some of these communities. And so, so this is something that's really, really significant. There's hurricane warning in effect for Levy, Marion, Citrus, Sumter, Lake, Seminole, Hernando, Orange, Pasco, Pinellas, Hillsborough, Polk, Osceola, Manatee, Hardy, Highland, Sarasota, DeSoto, Charlotte, and Lee counties. And then tropical storm warning in coastal Franklin, coastal Wakulla, Coastal Jefferson, Taylor, Sewanee, Lafayette, Dixie, Gilcrest, Western Columbia, Western Alachua, Okeechobee, Glades, Hendry, Collier, Monroe, including the Florida Keys and the Dry Tortugas. Uh, we have a hurricane watch for Nassau, Duval, Clay, St. John's, Putnam, Flagler, Volusia, Brevard, Indian River, Okeechobee, Glades, Hendry, Collier, Dry Tortugas, and then a tropical storm watch. Inland Jefferson, Madison, Hamilton, Eastern Columbia, Baker, Union, Bradford, Eastern Alachua, St. Lucie, Martin, Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami-Dade. So basically, the entire peninsula portion of Florida is, uh, is under some type of either a watch or a warning. The Florida Division of Emergency Management is actively addressing storm-related resource requests. We are currently fulfilling close to 1,000 missions to support our local communities. That includes everything from tiger dams and generators to staff support, as well as food and water and tarps. We've also deployed more than 11,000 feet of flood protection systems and prior we're prioritizing critical infrastructure like hospitals, wastewater treatment facilities, and electrical infrastructure. We've also done things like generators to support special needs sheltering operations. Of course, Starlink Internet, all counties have access to Starlink internet devices and can use those as they see fit. More than 350 ambulances and more than 30 paratransits are in operation. We also have another 144 in staging that can be used if the need arises. 
The state of Florida is amassing fuel reserves ahead of Milton and staging it to be utilized as needed. We have been dispatching fuel over the past 24 hours as gas stations have run out. Uh, so we currently have 268,000 gallons of diesel, 110,000 gallons of gasoline. Those numbers are less than what they were 24 hours ago because we've put a lot in, but we have an additional 1.2 million gallons of both diesel and gasoline that is currently en route to the state of Florida. Now, there is no fuel shortage. Uh, fuel continues to arrive in the state of Florida uh, by port and uh, what we're doing to bring it in on the ground. But lines at gas stations have been long. Gas stations are running out quicker than they otherwise would. And so that is causing the state of Florida to help assist with the mission to be able to get fuel to the gas stations so that Floridians have access. So last night, 27 fuel trucks were escorted by the Florida Highway Patrol to deliver fuel to stations in the anticipated impact area. We're also working with fuel companies such as Racetrack, Wawa, Shell, and Walmart to ensure fuel trucks are working 24-7 to keep fuel delivered as it comes into our ports. Now, uh, Port of Tampa, for example, our Gulf Coast ports uh, are not going to be receiving uh, ships at this point uh, per the Coast Guard. Uh, they do have a lot of fuel that's on hand, and the dockside operations will be continuing. We are assuming, doesn't mean it's going to happen, but we are assuming that there's going to be significant damage to the Port of Tampa, so we're operating as if there's going to be a significant interruption in their ability to receive fuel, uh, and Kevin and his team are, are actively working to get around that so that we have the ability uh, to continue bringing fuel into the state subsequent to the impacts from the storm. You know, as we've been noting, we have uh, taken on this debris mission to supplement the local governments in areas like Pinellas and Manatee, which uh, saw a lot of debris left over for Hurricane Helene. Uh, continue local officials, private contractors, continue the debris removal mission. Uh, our folks are going to continue to work 24-7. Our executive order requires the landfills to be open 24-7 and, in fact, We've uh, had to even pry a couple of them open to make sure that not just the state trucks and the private vendors, but also private citizens are able to drop off debris. We want to get as much of the debris picked up uh, as is possible. And as I noted, when we uh, saw that there was a storm forming, we understood that there was a lot of debris on the ground. Some of the uh, contractors work at different paces. This was not something that, that they were necessarily doing very quickly. Uh, so we took all state assets that were available throughout the state, took them off their normal missions, and surged them into these affected areas. Uh, we've now deployed over 300 dump trucks, uh, and they are continuing to work 24-7. So we have had, just with Florida Department of Transportation, uh, in the last 48 hours, they've removed 1,200 truckloads of debris from those hard-hit areas. That's almost 22,000 cubic yards. That is the equivalent moving in 48 hours with our state asset uh, than what any single private contractor has been able to do in the entire time since Hurricane Helene. So we appreciate what they're doing. They've been working around the clock, uh, and we want to continue that all day today. It's going to continue and into tomorrow until it's no longer safe to do so. The Florida National Guard, Florida State Guard, additional FDOT personnel, and Florida Highway Patrol are all involved not only in the debris removal, but in the larger hurricane preparation and response. We will have, before landfall, 8,000 National Guard for the state of Florida that will be activated. We have already on hand 34 different search and rescue aircraft. We've never had uh, this many resources prior to a storm. We have had what's called EMAC requests that get sent out to other states, and we've had a tremendous response from other states, just like we responded to North Carolina when they needed. States have come to Florida's aid. And so I just want to thank the states that have stepped up and helped us, whether it's a Chinook helicopter, whether it's some search and rescue personnel, you name it. Uh, we've had a number of states that have stepped up uh, to help us. Linemen and power restoration resources are being marshaled 
in advance of the storm, as is our standard practice. Uh, we now have uh, in excess of 37,000 linemen that are either in or en route to the state of Florida. As most people know, Hurricane Helene left a lot of damage in some of our neighboring states, and there have been a lot of linemen surged into those states still working on major power restoration. So some of these linemen are coming into Florida from as far away as California. So I know people like to see the sight of the linemen staging coming on I-10 to get into the state of Florida, and, and you, should, you should be thankful for that. But just know some of them have traveled a long way uh, to be able to be here and to be able to help get the power back on. Uh, we are hoping that, that that number ends up in excess of 40,000. So that'd be significantly more than what we had staged for Helene, which was a very rapid restoration. Of course, this storm could present much different challenges. Uh, I would like to say that the, the, the electrical co-ops, you know, they have staged 4,200 linemen, and their goal is to have 7,500 uh, just themselves between these co-ops by landfall. And to put that in perspective, I think five years ago, I don't think the co-ops had anybody that would come in uh, for, for mutual aid. Uh, so they've really stepped up and done a good job. And obviously, FPNL's got a lot of people. Duke, I know TECO has some. I think they're probably going to do some more as well. Uh, but everybody has, is coming together to do what they can to be ready for this potentially very complicated power restoration mission subsequent to the landing of Hurricane Milton. The state of Florida has also assisted in the evacuation of 202 health care facilities that are in the potential path of the storm. And I want to thank everybody that's been involved in that very difficult set of circumstances when you're talking about evacuating people out of health care facilities. So as we prepare for Hurricane Milton, we are also mindful that we have a lot of Floridians that are still reeling from Hurricane Helene. Uh, that's why we launched the Florida Disaster Fund, so that Floridians and others could make donations, so that th that money can go to help with relief efforts for, for Helene. Uh, this is a private fund. The donations are tax deductible. Uh, we are opening it also for Hurricane Milton. Uh, after Hurricane Ian, for example, the, the Florida Disaster Fund raised and distributed over $63 million to help Floridians. This thing for, helped rebuild homes. It helped providing food and supplies. It helped to aid small businesses. It helped to supplement uh, incomes for teachers and first responders who were having to go perform their duties while they were still suffering from the impacts of the storm. And I've directed Volunteer Florida to keep the fund activated. We want to continue to do what we can. So far, almost $4 million has been raised for the victims of Hurricane Helene. Thanks for everybody who's done it. We've had tremendous don donations from Lennar, Wells Fargo, Walmart, and Publix, uh, but we're accepting donations in any uh, amount that you can do. So, so please, if you want to do that, you can go to floridadisasterfund.org, floridadisasterfund.org. You can also text DISASTER to 20222 uh, if you want to donate via text message. So we are closing in on less than 48 hours away from the projected landfall of major Hurricane Milton. Uh, now's the time to execute your plan. You do have time to get to a shelter. You have time to, uh, to, to evacuate further than that if that's what you want, but that time is running out. As we get into Wednesday, there's no guarantee what the weather is going to be like starting Wednesday morning. You may have a window where it may be safe, but you may not. So use today uh, as your day to finalize and execute the plan that is going to protect you and your family. Know your evacuation zone. I think, unfortunately, a lot of people are now quite familiar with their evacuation zone, given what we've gone through in recent weeks. But if you have questions about that, you can visit floridadisaster.org backslash no to determine if you live in an evacuation zone. And again, a lot of the places on the west coast of Florida that did receive significant storm surge for Hurricane Helene is projected to have even more storm surge from Hurricane Milton. Evacuations were uh, in effect uh, starting yesterday, uh, and those are ongoing. Mandatory evacuations have been issued for portions of the following, Charlotte, Citrus, Collier, Hernando, Hillsborough, Lee, Manatee, Pasco, Pinellas, Sarasota, 
and Volusia counties. Of course, we suspended the tolls along the evacu uh, evacuation routes, and the Florida Department of Transportation has opened roadway shoulders as necessary to facilitate evacuations and ease congestion on both I-4 and I-75. Uh, yesterday saw a lot of people on the road. Uh, particularly those are roads that on rush hour are very crowded anyways. Uh, it was about 150% more than what we would typically have on roads like I-75. Uh, that moved slow. Uh, the average was about 20 miles an hour. Uh, that resolved at about 1 a.m. Traffic resumed to, to normal flow, but we're already seeing traffic get heavier today. So just be prepared for that. Uh, FDOT is using all the resources to be able to create as much flow as possible, but there's an inordinate number of people uh, that, that are on the road, uh, knowing that it's going to be probably for most of today uh, slower than normal. Uh, just keep in mind, you do not have to get on the interstate and go far away. Uh, the shelters are open in all of these counties now. Uh, you can evacuate tens of miles. You do not have to evacuate hundreds of miles. Of course, it's your choice what you want to do, but there are options. And I know there's a lot of folks, particularly a lot of elderly, they may not want to get on the road on these interstates uh, in, in normal circumstances, but certainly in circumstances where, where they're really going to be jammed, you do have options. Uh, and that is not something when you hear evacuate, don't think you've got to get on the interstate and outrun the storm. You can find safe places on hot, hot, higher ground, hunker down, and then be able to go back to your home when the storm passes. We also have emergency accommodation modules that are activated uh, through Visit Florida, both the Speedia and Priceline. If you want to access these modules, you can vi go to visitflorida.com backslash Priceline, and then expedia.com backslash Florida. We've also worked with the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association, uh, and they are working with members to continue to offer reduced prices for hotel rooms on a distress rate for Floridians who are fleeing the storm, as well as waiving or reducing applicable pet fees. Uh, we have properties, the Rosen properties, Red Roof Inns, Alofts, La Quintas, Motel 6, Best Western, Holiday Inns. Uh, they're all on board uh, to be able to do this and help uh, Floridians when they're in need. So we appreciate uh, you doing that. And again, having a storm that, I mean, it's projected to make landfall about 125 mile an hour winds. And, and look, maybe it's stronger than that. Uh, but the reality is, if it's in that Cat 3, Cat 4 range, uh, if you are on higher ground, and particularly if you're inland, uh, most of these structures in Florida are going to be able to handle it. You may lose power. There may be other issues. Uh, but as long as you're getting away from the storm surge, that's really the most important thing that you need to do. Florida has also partnered with Uber for Hurricane Milton evacuation. So you can get free rides to and from shelters in counties with active evacuation orders. They did this with Hurricane Helene. They're now doing it with Hurricane Milton. And so if you want a free ride to a shelter, you use the promo code Milton Relief, one word, Milton Relief. So thanks for Uber for stepping up and, and helping Floridians when they're in need. The following counties will close schools beginning uh, Tuesday, October 8th. Brevard, Charlotte, Citrus, Collier, DeSoto, Glades, Hardy, Hendry, Hernando, Highlands, Hillsborough, Indian River, Lake, Lee, Levy, Manatee, Okeechobee, Osceola, Pasco, Pinellas, Polk, Sarasota, Seminole, St. Lucie, Sumter, Volusia. I think some of them actually were closed yesterday too. But as of now, all of those counties have schools closed. There are 36 county-run shelters that are open and operating in counties that are in the path of the storm. Most of these big counties are gonna have multiple locations where you can go to shelter. All counties have at least one pet friendly shelter and at least one special needs shelters. Uh, we have not seen a major, even though we've seen a lot of evacuations, we have not seen a lot of folks going into the shelter yet. I think the total population is what, a few thousand, Kevin, as of right now? So, and, and honestly, that's not, unexpected because if you're going to go to a shelter, you know, why would you go two days before the storm? So I think people will likely be gravitating more to the shelters uh, today and maybe even through tomorrow morning. Uh, so we do anticipate that those numbers will climb. In anticipation of that, uh, we also have additional 
uh, state-supported shelters uh, that we are going to operate in partnership with the private sector to support and augment what those local counties are already doing in terms of their shelter. So if we do get to a point where Pinellas County, Hillsborough County, prime shelters are full, uh, you're going to have other options uh, to be able to go to, and those are not simply limited to, to those counties. You will have shelters in other counties that are a little bit further away from the storm surge. And finally, the state has identified 14 potential sites for state-operated uh, shelters, and we are going to announce four of those sites. These are big, like Category 5 proof warehouse type things that can have thousands of people. I mean, what are they can do? How many thousands do you think on some of those? One of our sites, we estimate about 10,000. Yeah, so I mean, we have one of the sites can do 10,000. Uh, others will do multiple thousands. But these are designed to be a shelter of last resort. And so they are going to be uh, adjacent to some of the evacuation routes. We're going to have some in Polk County, close to I-4. And then we're going to have some in Hillsborough and Pasco County, uh, not too far from, from I-75 North. And so those will be announced. We're going to start with four. If there is a demand to do more. We will do more. But it could be a situation where if you're trying, you know, tonight, you're on the road, traffic's bad, you say, hey, there's a shelter here in Lakeland I can go to and be able to ride out the storm and then go back. That is an absolutely safe option to do. And we encourage if there, that is necessary for folks to be able to do it. Now, you can find your county's emergency management page, which will have this type of information and others um, at Florida, or, excuse me, for sheltering, floridadisaster.org backslash shelters to have the list of shelter locations. And then for general, including sheltering, as well as other orders, floridadisaster.org backslash counties. So please keep an eye on alerts and advice from your local officials as the storm approaches. Uh, this has been a very difficult time uh, for a lot of people in the state of Florida to have a major hurricane come uh, not even two weeks ago. Uh, that we got hit with Hurricane Helene is a very difficult thing to go through. We did have people lose homes. We had people lose very valued possessions. And unfortunately, uh, we did experience loss of life. Uh, and so you never want to have to go through that again. But you certainly don't want to have to go through it uh, on the heels of less than two weeks after getting hit by a Category 4 to potentially have another major hurricane that's going to impact some of the very same areas that saw significant storm surge. But here we are. I can tell you the folks back here at the state EOC, I mean, this has been going on now for, for a little bit more than two weeks in terms of our first state of emergency with Helene, working on the prep, working on the response, and now we're responding to Helene and preparing for Milton and going to have a really robust response for Milton. People have been working around the clock in the local communities. Our, our first responders, our law enforcement, their stage, they're ready to go. Our National Guard, our State Guard, all these people. And some of the search and rescue who helped immediately after Helene. And then when that mission was no longer necessary, they went to do missions in North Carolina. Now they're back ready uh, for a third round of potential search and rescue. So there's a lot of folks that have been working very hard. And I know our citizens go through. It's very frustrating uh, to have your, your life interrupted and to potentially have uh, your possessions in your home on the line. We can't control how strong or weak this storm will be when it hits the state of Florida. We can't control the path of the storm. The only thing that, that we can control is the decisions that are made on an individual level uh, to be able to protect yourself or your family. Uh, we hope to have as minimal damage as possible, but looking at how big this storm is, yeah, you know, there's going to be significant damage um, in different parts of Florida. And it's not just going to be with the surge. That will be the, probably the worst, but this storm is going to go through the peninsula as a hurricane. And you're going to have hurricane force winds on the east coast of Florida. So make the decisions now and put execute your plan to be able to protect yourself and your family. No matter what property damage is done, uh, we can rebuild homes, we can rebuild businesses, we can get people back on their feet, uh, but only if 
they go, they're safe and they survive the storm. We're not going to be able to bring people back who, who stay behind in 10 or 15 feet of storm surge. So you have time today. Time is running out, but you do have time today to, to make the decision to heed any evacuation orders and to do what you need to do to protect yourself and your family. So, so please take heed and do it now. Okay, Kevin Guthrie. Thank you, Governor, for your... All right, Governor DeSantis, there a rather extensive news conference about the preparations ahead of the hurricane, Hurricane Milton, especially for the Tampa Bay area, kind of a low-lying area, of course, of Florida. 51 counties under a state of emergency right now. That storm surge in the Tampa area could be between 10 and 15 feet. Yeah, and he was talking about how important the debris removal process still is, yeah. that they are making sure to get as much debris as possible because of Hurricane Helene and the damage it caused there.